So this is Mr. Hanrahan, our school librarian. And he is just gonna be a great resource for AP Seminar throughout this process. Today, he's gonna talk about key search terms. And I know that some of you are like, key search terms, like we haven't even gotten a research question yet. Just trust me that if you don't use good key research terms, you are going to be so frustrated with the research process. So like, that's why we're recording. That's why I invited him in. Um, and you can also reach out to Mr. Hanrahan to see if he has availability in his schedule to meet with you for your research question, for re for your um, key search terms, for basically for anything. He's like the research yes. director. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to you now, take it away. Yeah, I, I like to interact with students. Yes, I, I want to support you. So uh, thanks, Mrs. Wagner, and thanks, students in AP Seminar. Um, I'm going to go over three databases relatively quickly. And uh, I just want you to hold your questions until I get done with each database as we go. And I'll stop broadcasting, and then we can kind of resolve questions. But if there was, uh, I've done this a couple times already, there was an issue. So if, if anybody could unmute and then say, hey, your iPad's frozen, that happened one time. So I'd love to, as I'm talking about things, I'm describing what I see on my screen. So I want you guys to stop me if we have an issue. And it worked really well already. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. If you can multitask and split your screen and be in a browser when I'm talking about these things and doing it, I think that would be really good for you to do what I'm doing. So I'm using Safari and I'm going to the Wheeling website. I just could like Google, you know, WHS D214 to uh, get to this page. And I really think it's a good idea that you have the Wheeling page, you know, bookmarked or saved or added to your home screen and that share arrow will let you like bookmark it here in um, Safari. And once you're here though, you go to the menu and then you go academics and then the word library. And all that is right up here at the top, um, home academics and library. And from that spot, you can get to the databases from the middle of the page, find databases we subscribe to, or we call them 214 library resources over here. Those two spots are valuable because we know you're gonna go in Google and look for things. The difference is Google doesn't have a lot of peer reviewed quality sources. And if you do find them, sometimes they'll make you pay for them. Guess where we paid for quality sources and good information on this page. We call this like the library resources page because it has databases, but it also has a lot of other information in here. And today I'm gonna to cover three databases. Opposing viewpoints by Gail. I'm gonna go into an EBSCO database called Mass Ultra, And then I'm gonna to go to this CQ researcher one at the very end. So the first one I'm gonna do, and many of you are familiar with this, so I apologize if freshman year or in middle school, you learned all this and you're not getting anything new, but I, I think some of the tips and things today will be valuable. So I'm gonna go into this opposing viewpoints. I had already logged in before, so it didn't make me put in my dead ID and password. And for this database, it held. But at the top of the screen, there's a sign in with Google. I click the sign in with Google at the top. And then I'm going to pick my D214 account. And I'm now signed in. It has my name at the top. I'm not even going to search at first. I think this database has a lot of good information in it. You could type some keywords in there, but I'm gonna to go to browse issue. And I actually like how they take the topics and break them down into subtopics or categories. But I'm also gonna scroll and for today's lesson, I'm gonna use the death penalty. So, oops, CNN and the election just gets me all fired up and I get my notifications that probably should have turned them off. So anyway, I'm scrolling to the uh, death penalty. Wait, the death penalty is not here. It's not under D, E, A, what? So I'm going back. I'm going to look under, oh, capital punishment. So instead of being able to find the death penalty under D, I needed to use the synonym for the death penalty, which is uh, capital punishment. So 
this overview can be valuable. And if you hit read, read more, it would open this up. And this is a background overview of the whole topic of the death penalty. And a lot of times there's lenses in here. This one is about state and the, the reform associated with it and the laws associated with it. Okay. So those overviews are good. If you can find a topic, it's a great way to gather new keywords from that. And these results here in the middle in the gray, including viewpoints or academic journal articles or news or magazine articles, I'm going to go into viewpoints. And I want you to see that on the side over here where it says filter your results, you can hit the word subject. And Ms. Wagner, I think you probably remember these databases. We've been using them for a while. They keep updating them, but the subjects are still really good. And this is where when I find some subjects that I like, I could copy them out of here and put them over in a doc. And I have a doc going that from the very beginning, as soon as I'm working on a topic, I start putting keywords in a doc. And I also start putting my citations in a doc, even though this is more of like a working bibliography and it doesn't have the hanging and dense. I'm just copying my citations into here. I think that's important on the very first day while I'm showing you this, because if I didn't know what a wrongful conviction was or um, cruel and unusual punishment or racial discrimination and stuff like that, or execution by lethal injection, just all these things, I could copy those out. And, and you know what? There was even on one here, cost and the economics of capital punishment and the death penalty. You could always pick any of these when you think the title or author or the date is valuable for you. And if you scroll through it and you like it, you think it'll be valuable for you, you could hit the Google Drive button here and it'll automatically save how should society punish a murderer into my Google Drive. And I can look over here in my Google Drive, try to go to my recent and see if how should society punish a murderer went in there immediately. There is a citation at the bottom. Sometimes it's MLA, sometimes it's APA. We need MLA for this assignment. If that doesn't work, you could also hit this download button in the middle of the top and then it opened a PDF. If I'm using Safari, I can hit the up arrow and I can copy this to my Google Drive with that button there. One other option you have is if you want to print anything in Safari, if you hit print in a browser and then you actually pinch and widen to expand it, it made whatever was on my screen a PDF. Now, this one already was a PDF, but um, you could do that even from like a page like that. So that print and then expand is a good uh, technique to use. I also though want to get the citation, which is under the site button at the top, right next to uh, send or download. And I want to select and copy this uh, citation out. So I have it on the very day I'm going to save my work. And I've been working on this doc here with keywords in it. I'm going to paste it in. And the reason why that's important on the first day is I am always going to have access to that digital doc and I know where I got it from and I do both things on the day I save something. So I've shown you a couple ways how to gain subjects, how to put things in Google Drive, how to um, save citations. And uh, I think that's a quick rundown of this database. And I think that was probably enough for them to ask me questions if they had some questions now it's very short but i also wanted to make it like quick so we can get to two more and i can listen now for a second anybody have any questions you're muted mrs wagner yeah um i don't have a question but i just want to remind students that they could also type questions um in the chat as well that we can answer absolutely yeah 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 Should I just move on to the next one? Got it, okay, cool. The next one is a lot like what is available on the college board. The college board has a digital portfolio. So I'm gonna go back to the either library page. 
the library page or the 214 database page. A lot of times if you're doing research, you have like a lot of tabs open and I actually think that's an okay habit to be in to have extra tabs open so I can bounce between things. The EBSCO database I'm talking about is Mass Ultra, but if you were to go into the College Board digital portfolio where you submit your work or look at um, what the uh, assignments are, there's actually a really good EBSCO database in there because I don't have the same access as a student. We're just gonna cover this Mass Ultra one and the one in uh, the College Board digital portfolio looks a lot like this one. So the one I'm talking about is right here. So when I open that one up, I had already signed in previously, so that's why that worked. Um, I wanna mention that the other databases I did by Gale, like Opposing Viewpoints, automatically made everything full text. I have to click this full text button right here. And if I don't do that, you're not always gonna get full text results. So I think this one is a little different. It's not easy to just browse a long list of subjects. So when I do this one, I put in the word death penalty and they do have peer, some peer reviewed here and they also have subject headings. And the number one subject heading is the previous word we learned and knew, maybe, maybe we already knew it, from the last database and that was capital punishment. But I didn't see the word criminal law. There, I hit show more. There's lethal injection, capital punishment sentencing. If I like capital punishment sentencing, I can go up to my keyword list and add that keyword to my doc as I see it because I want to make sure I don't forget that. And I'm going to add that like this. So as I find something, I'm adding it to my keywords from what I'm learning from the database. If I were to select any of these, criminal justice system and sentencing and hit update, I went from having like maybe thousands of results to now I only have 191 that have both of these subjects in them. But if I get rid of one like this, it's gonna or narrow it actually to 87. If I get rid of the other one, I come back to 3,378. I wanna show them the technique of adding this or so now it's going to look for capital punishment or the death penalty. And I went from 3,300 to 3,800. I think that's valuable to see by just adding or. If I get rid of the or, it's going to pretend like the word and is in between there. And I'm going to get 1,963. And then you could verify that by putting in the word and and getting the same results. So I think that's a really nice little reminder about how Booleans work. And uh, I now want to remind them about how to find uh, these articles. And I think this example, some of these examples are going to work really nicely, like how to get away with murder. This is a it's got subject headings. It looks like it includes Roman culture, so it's more historic. It is. So maybe this one doesn't work. And I figured that out pretty quick. But this one seems more recent about death row inmates in Alabama. And I'm going to scroll and I immediately get the full text. That's because the HTML full text is here along with the PDF full text. If I go back to my results, some of them look like this. And they go, hey, Miss Wagner. Hey, Mr. Hanrahan, Dr. Xavier. Where's the full text? It's right over here. So I think it's important to remember like to look at the side and to also gather your subject headings and stuff like that. This is Washington state um, capital punishment laws that are trying to overturn or abolish it. And if I wanna open that, I click the PDF over here and these steps are actually really valuable. Normally you'd think, hey, why can't I scroll through this like I normally could? If you can't, you can hit the P download PDF at the top. Now I can hit the, well, here, I wanna show you. I could scroll through this and see that there's actual full text here with some charts and people. Um, 
data to go with what's going on and it goes all the way up to 2018 that's pretty recent so if i want to put this in my google drive i hit the up arrow and i could copy it to my google drive i could do the print option to expand it if i had trouble um i also wanted students to see the uh citation tool which is on the side it's this word cite and then as i do that i need to copy out the mla and I put this in my Google Doc as well. And instead of spending the time doing that now, I just wanted students to see those differences about HTML and PDFs, where to put them. Uh, one thing I wanna remind students of, I'm gonna go show them that as that doc came in my most recent, when it comes from, let's say debating the death penalty, I wanna do this one. As I open this, download, share, copy. See how it says save file content server? Almost every document from EBSCO is gonna be called content server. It doesn't really tell you the name of the document, which this one is debating the death penalty. So anytime I can click on these three dots and rename something, instead of calling it content server, it's what's called debate death penalty. I think that's better. And it's actually can be a challenge to find your documents if you don't do what I just did there every time you try to download a PDF through EBSCO. And if you're having trouble and you can't see your most recent, sometimes you can click the menu here and go by name or you could change it again and go by like last modified. So I've got a lot of documents in here by name. Look at that. So it'd take a while to go through all those. So I may need to change it to like last modified or when it was shared last or when I go to the menu and do recent. So I think managing all that is an important part of what you're doing in EBSCO and I want students to see that. So that's the kind of EBSCO database intro with Mass Ultra that I wanted them to see. I did this very quickly with the AND or the OR Booleans, but I think that's a good start for that database. And I can listen to some questions that students have now about that one. Sorry about that, Ms. Wagner. That was like seven minutes on that one. No worries. I think today is really an overview day of now they will have mm -hmm. all this information in this video um, and they also have you as a resource. So we, I'll look mm -hmm. for questions in the chat and I'll listen for them, but I won't be surprised if we don't get many. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the next database, CQ, and um, hopefully there's some value in the uh, keyword search video that I made that covers some things that I didn't cover today. All right. So I'm back on the library page, 214 library resources. I wanted students to use this CQ researcher one here. Um, it says prospect at the top, but don't sweat it. They're not that special. It's just the way we pay for databases. It's fine. I just kind of threw prospect under the bus there and it's getting recorded. I really like the librarian over there. They have a nice school. <laughs> okay. The uh, Instead of doing a search again, I am actually going to go into this browse topics or browse reports and I was interested in the death penalty or capital punishment. And I'm gonna come down to death penalty or wait, no, I was gonna to go to capital punishment too, right? Cause like, do they have, what the heck, CAP. So in this database, they don't have capital punishment. They have death penalty. And then it says death penalty debates 2010. Well, that's weird. I'm gonna go into this other one and look at law and justice and then try to look at capital punishment. Nope, death penalty, okay. Oh, there's a short report on the death penalty and gun control and it keeps getting updated. Like there's one from 2018, 2019. Is the public turning against the death penalty? This one is only about five pages. A full CQ database report is probably like 20 pages. So this one truly is short. Um, I browse through it. I think I like it. I'm then going to probably, if you can't see the PDF button, you may need to hit the print and then expand or spread your fingers out and it'll give you a PDF of the 
document and I'm going to hit the up arrow to share and copy that to my Google Drive. Um, it'll then be called death penalty CQR for congressional quarterly. I could also hit the uh, site now and copy the MLA um, and put that in my doc over here. because as I find these, I need to save where I'm getting them from. So I copy that over and I'm just gonna do one other thing. I wanna just do a search and show what death penalty looks like in this database. What kind of results am I gonna get? You're, I end up getting some of the same things I saw on the previous page, but the long article, and there's a whole bunch of topics over here the bigger the number, the more closely related it probably is your topic. So law and justice was like 186 and there wasn't one that had more. So I was like right in picking that one. But if I wanted to look at like death penalty as a human rights issue, it'll narrow it down. And now only the ones C69 at the top here will show up that cover that topic. Um, I'm gonna do the last thing, which is showing what the two, this is pretty old, 10 year old death penalty debate looked like. This is the full um, report. And I was telling you how long it was. See what I mean when I say it's like almost 20 pages. Inside here, there's other people debating the pro and con if it should be abolished and stuff like that. But at 10 years, that's pretty old. And these are different than peer reviewed articles. So it's just a way to get started, gather some keywords um, using CQ to try to like get your topic going, get some lenses and perspectives associated with your topic. Um, see all here's view PDF. That'd be another way to do this. And then hit the up arrow to share and then copy it to your Google Drive. Now that's a big document. So I'm gonna open, and that one has a weird name too though. See, CQR, I'm gonna hit the triple air dots, rename it. But I'm gonna even throw in the 2010 because I feel like that's kind of old. So I, I don't forget that. And this is a big doc compared to some of the other stuff. This one's 24 pages, I guessed correctly. Okay. If 20 and 24 are equal, I guess that's my guess is correct. <laughs> All right. That was a quick rundown of that database. Um, some of the other videos hopefully are valuable and I want students to contact me and know that I'll be a part of supporting them in this whole process. Mr. Hanrahan, thank you so much for joining our class today. And I just want to remind students that the reason Mr. Hanrahan went at the pace he did is because we were recording it. And so he didn't need to put pauses in because he and I anticipate that you will rewatch this recording and just stop at the parts that you want. So you're not going to sit and watch the whole thing, but you're like, oh, I'm going into CQ researcher and I forget what he was saying about those key search terms on the side. Just watch the, that 10 seconds and pause it. Yeah. Now, I do notice we have 15 minutes left. Um, so Mr. Hanrahan, I don't know your schedule, but um, if that is the presentation for the databases, do you mind if like one group calls dibs on you for today that they wanna meet with you for a few minutes for help with their research project? All right, um, cause they're just choosing topics right now. So I'm going to the first person that unmutes and says, we want Hanrahan, he will go to your breakout room. Uh -oh. and I'm going to uh, stop recording now. <laughs>